Well, 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 welcome to the Runners Connect Run to the Top Extra Kick Extra Kick Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Runners Connect Run to the Top Extra Kick Podcast. A uh, happy Tuesday. It's Coach Jeff back with you here today. It's been an unseasonably warm September for us here. It's 85 degrees, so really kind of enjoying that. Trying to get the last, you know, eke every bit of summer out of we, that we can, especially for us in the Northeast, because we know December, January, and February are coming up. So hopefully the weather in your neck of the woods is, is well, and you're enjoying it and getting in some great runs, whether you're training for marathon, half marathon this fall, maybe something in the winter. I hope it's going well. In any case, why don't get to uh, today's question, which is from Melissa. So let's go ahead and let Melissa take it away. Hi, my name is Melissa Ellis, and I've been running for about 10 years, um, mostly sticking to roads, and I'm curious to try trail running. I was just wondering if there's any tips you could give about switching any types of footwear or special types of cross training I need to start in order to be ready for hitting my first trail. Thanks. Well, that's a great question, Melissa. I think a lot of our listeners here have that same exact question. Trail running is only growing in popularity. And there are some things that you can do to help better prepare your body for the transition to trail running. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is the the thing that's probably going to be most probably prominent for you is going to be you're going to really want to strengthen your feet, your ankles, and your lower legs. Trails are generally going to have iffy footing and having very strong ankles, lower legs, and feet are going to help when you transition into doing more and more trail running. The ankle strength is going to help make sure that we, you know, you're not rolling your ankle every time you're out there and help prevent some of that. And then also the lower leg strengthening, you're definitely going to be testing those muscles a lot more. So when you're running on the roads or, you know, even just light, uh, like a track or whatever, your every footstep is roughly the same. Your lower legs and your feet do a lot of stabilization. Uh, So when you're on a flat road, there's not a lot of work they need to do to keep you stable. It's a pretty flat, even surface. Moving to the trail, even if there's not a lot of roots on the trail, it's definitely going to be more uneven, both just the trail itself, any rocks or even just little rocks on the trail, any indentations in the ground uh, from footprints, other things, and then also hills. There's going to be a lot of stress that your lower legs and feet have to now compensate for in order to better stabilize you. So the more that you can do those exercises ahead of time, the easier their transition is going to be in terms of, you know, kind of you getting tired. So your, your lower legs will get a little bit less tired, but also making sure that the stress that you put on your intrinsic little leg muscles doesn't eventually end up creeping up to become something more of more injury related. So tiring out those little intrinsic muscles could cause maybe your, your calves to maybe not fire quite as hard as they uh, would normally or fire harder than they would normally. And you might get something in your calf or, it might stress out your plantar fascia, something like that. So those types of exercises are going to be really good for you. If you do go to Runners Connect and you search on the blog, uh, we do have a couple articles with some good routines for both ankle strengthening and lower leg strengthening. And they these routines, are we do have some available just on our blog for free. And then we do have a strength training for runners program, which has a whole section on lower leg strengthening. We call it our Achilles program since they all have Greek names and Achilles standing for pretty much everything in the lower leg. So definitely want to kind of get on top of that. That'll that'll help a lot. The second thing you're going to want to look into is definitely, as you mentioned, footwear. So trail shoes, those are going to help a lot for a couple reasons. Typically, trail shoes do a couple things. First, they're a little bit more stable than traditional running shoes. So it kind of gets back to the idea where you know, you're going to be requiring a little bit more balance. So they have a little bit more support in the sense of maybe not rolling your ankle as much, that kind of thing. So it's going to help there. They have much better grip. So generally speaking on trails, there's going to be times where they're slippery or muddy or where just getting your footing is a little bit difficult. And so the bottom of the trail shoe generally is a more studded traction-based for uh, form. And so it's going to help you kind of make sure that you maintain grip. And then they're also waterproof, which isn't necessary, but it is very nice to not have your feet immediately soaking wet as soon as you hit a puddle or anything like that. So those, uh, just getting a pair of trail shoes will really help. And my recommendation is to probably head into your local running store if you have one and check it out, like what would, uh, like what fits best. A lot of brands have a complement to their, so for example, um, I'm thinking in this specific case, like the Brooks Adrenaline, they have a Brooks Adrenaline trail shoe. 
or at least I used to. I haven't checked up on it too recently, but sometimes that can be a good way if you don't have a running store is if there is a shoe that you really enjoy, you can kind of see if maybe the that company makes a matching trail shoe, that kind of thing. But other than that, you definitely kind of want to test them out, make sure that the stiffness is right for you, that the the stance is right for you, that kind of thing. The other thing that you're going to want to just kind of make sure that you do is as you transition your trails, make sure that you transition your mind to how you're training and how you're approaching your training. Most specifically, you're going to run a lot slower on the trails than you are on the roads, both uh, on your easy run days and then any workouts that you might try to do. So you have to really realize this. And so you can't look at what your normal easy pace is out on the roads and then try to run that on a trail. Like it's just not going to happen. Even if it's a flat trail, more than likely there's some roots and rocks and stuff that's kind of impeding your ability to run at a specific pace. So when it comes to easy pace on a trail, run by feel and don't be concerned that it could be significantly slower than what you're running on the road. So keep that in mind. Same thing if you wanted to do workouts or anything like that. Couple things. One, like like we mentioned, you're obviously going to be run, running a lot slower. So stuff like speed work probably just isn't advisable unless you are a high level trail runner and you are competing and running really quickly on a trail. And that's kind of what your end goal is. In that case, you do need to be specific to you know what you're trying to do. Otherwise, the way I would use trails for workouts, et cetera, would probably be to do hills. Generally speaking, if you're running on trails, they're going to be a little bit hillier. So you can do more strength effort-based workouts where you're using the hill, maybe running the uphills hard and kind of taking it easy on the downhill. I try to recommend not necessarily running the downhills like in workouts if you're going to try to be going fast because you know generally that's going to create the most amount of potential for injury, uh, both with the pounding and foot placement. So when possible, if you're doing a workout, plan it to either walk or run the hills easy, uh, downhills easy, and then the uphills be the harder part of your interval or whatever it may be, be something like that. So those are some, I think, generally good guidelines for how you can transition into doing uh, more trail running. Like any type of training also, just make sure that you, if, uh, if you're concerned about it, just transition gradually. Don't go from running on the roads seven, six days a week to running on the trail six days a week. You know, try to kind of make that transition a little bit more gradual. That will help you a lot. Just give your body a feel uh, without kind of overworking it and overdoing it. Melissa, I hope that helped answer your question and gave you some good ideas. Check out the ankle strengthening, lower leg strengthening uh, routines that we have on the website. I think they'll be really helpful for you. And um, I hope you enjoy the transition to the trails, being in nature, definitely a fun thing. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to today's question. I hope you have an awesome run today, and I'll be back with you tomorrow. Thanks so much.